Hello. I'm recording now. Great. So you're on the road right now. You were just in uh, <laughs> Phoenix, was it, or Scott? Uh, you you're on the road right now, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I just got off the road. It's my first tour as Beardo. Like, um, it's actually my first tour ever as a solo artist, like by myself, not just being a guitar player or. Awesome. And how's it going? It's going great. I mean, the whole reason why I went ahead and even pursued it is because the whole, I mean, you know what, when I started, when I was, you know, I was in a band called White Star. Right. And I was in a band called Run 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 before that. And that's my L.A. career. I've been here for seven years. And um, so I was in Run Run Run, wasn't happy because I wasn't really, I wasn't liking where everything was going. And at the time, I, was, I just got to L.A. Right. <laughs> and I was in this band that was practically famous, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And the TV show and all that, which I was kind of not really down for. I'm not really into that glitz and glam. And, and I'm, not really, I'm, I'm more into like making great music, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, so to get to your, po your question is, I was in White Star and um, I just, we took a break now for, we took a break for it. That's awesome. Yeah, I noticed. I mean, it seems like MySpace has kind of been the path for for all of you guys, for you, Mickey yeah, Avalon, and Dirt Nasty. You know, I think it all comes. To, I think it comes down to a lot of things. Like, of course, we live in LA, so we had a head start on the MySpace thing, you know. Right. And um, also, like you know, it was just I don't know. It was just it just uh, I kind of hated it at first, and I wasn't really down with it. And, but say though, MySpace doesn't work for some people too, you know? Like, it just kind of like works, it just kind of worked out for Mickey, and then through Mickey we all got pushed through, I think, you know? Right, right. Well, yeah. But the, the music of Beardo, it's, it's weird because I was a producer and I was perfectly happy, and I was perfectly happy being a guitar player, but I wasn't too. Like, there was a song, there was something about Lifestyle that was really great, but like, those lyrics didn't really mean anything to me. Right, yeah, I was, I... I didn't have bitches in cars and diamonds. <laughs> I fucking came from, from Philly, like, my parents were dead, dirt broke. I came to L.A. seven, I came to L.A. seven years ago with no, no money in my pocket at all, with three of my friends who all left me here, and, and basically just worked two jobs a day, struggling, and your band trying to live the L.A. dream, and, um, and for me, getting a lifestyle was this whole trip for me, and I was down for it at first, but then I started to notice that I wasn't really happy because it really wasn't what I wanted to talk about, you know? Right. I wanted to kind of talk about some real shit, you know? Yeah, I like uh, Fight a Revolution a lot. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, the Fight a Revolution was written... It took four songs to write that one. Because I wrote four... I wrote a song called America the Great. I wrote one called Living Off the Grid, which you'll probably never hear these songs. They're B-sides. They're all good songs. But I didn't want to be a political person. I didn't want to be, like, this political guy. And everyone was like, you should just be a political... Like, that's what you are. And I'm like, no, I'm not. Like, I was affected by the war because I grew up in Desert Storm and my, a lot of my uncles went to war and got fucked when they came back. And I just saw 
Yeah, I dug it. I mean, it was uh, it was cool the way you you put it, cause I mean, the I don't know if it's you or the character you were playing in the song, but you were kind of self-deprecating. You said something like, "I'd kill myself if I wasn't a bitch," or, or was that that song? I think so. Yeah, that's it. That's you're right. And that's and that was, yeah, you're right. I put I kind of put myself in it too, and like how like I I don't know I kind of I got lucky to be honest because I because I mean when I wrote that song I wrote it in like literally five minutes. I'm not kidding. I got the beat together and then all of a sudden I just I was standing up in my studio in my house in my underwear in the morning and I was literally just I had the mic in the room exact in the room with the music playing back. I didn't give a fuck and I was just literally just I I didn't write anything down. It just started coming to me. That's awesome. I swear to God, it was like a it was like a dream song because it, it can't every line was coming to me. Right. Like so, like it was meant to be. You know what I mean? I was like meant to write that song. And like I said, you, I wrote four songs that were political before it. That I was like I was trying to get to that song, but I but I quit. I was like, this song is good, but it's not really like I can't put I, this isn't getting this is good, but it just sounds like I'm I'm hinting towards I really need to, I really want people to feel it. Like I want people to feel what a soldier would feel like if a, or if you came back from the non war, like like what you feel like when everyone was just like everything you fought for it doesn't mean anything and all your benefits that you can that you wanted that you were promised aren't there and and, and then you know, I said Reagan because in the 80s, Reagan is the guy who, who fucking, he, all those people that are sick and mental and, and got mental from the war, from killing people and all that and just being around all that for so long. And he closed all those hospitals. I don't know if you know about that in, in um, downtown L.A. Yeah, well, I know that a lot of the, the majority of the homeless for a long time were, were Vietnam vets and vets of the other wars. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I know. Actually, I actually worked with the homeless in downtown LA. <laughs> Reagan was the first to really fuck the soldiers, and not the first. There's a lot of presidents, but he was like one of the first to really fuck the vets, and like that's why I blew him up. And it was just like I don't know, like like, like I killed myself in a role with a bitch, meaning like I mean, how many times has I mean, for me, I wanted to like kill myself a couple of times, but I never. Obviously, I'm. I, I that's for. I feel like that's for a weak person. And like when I was a kid or whatever, for whatever reason, cause I lived a life on, you know, I dabbled in drugs and I dabbled in, and I've been poor my whole life and, and I felt failure like everyone, like, like you and everyone else and just, you know, and I just wrote this song that was about the simple man just coming back from war and just what you would feel like. Very cool. And this CD is coming out on Halloween, is that right? What's that? Uh, your CD is coming out on Halloween? Uh, the thing was Halloween because... I made it Halloween because I was supposedly going to play with Glenn Danzig. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> so I said, if I'm going to play with Glenn Danzig, then I'm going to put my CD out that day. But you know what? That didn't come through. So, I, 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 you know what? To be honest, like, if my record came out on October 31st, like, I have a lot of fans, and I'd probably sell 3,000 CDs, 5,000 CDs, and I'd probably sell a bunch of iTunes. But really, like, I'm not in it for the money at this point. Like, I'm... I'm, I'm 20 years old and I, I lived a, a very like I lived a, uh, I'm living a happy life, but I'm not living a, like I'm not I don't have a new I don't have a new and I don't have the things that I like, I like to take my girlfriend out to dates and I would like to like buy guitars and have a really nice studio, but I don't. But I, you know what I make the music that I like and you know that's where I'm at right now and it's like I feel like if I'm gonna put this record out, I'm not gonna wait until I feel like it's like right time to put like a tour is coming up or something for me to like to take it out on the road, you know? 
Yeah. So I'm pushing it back to January. Cool. Well, hey, man, can I go to the uh, CD release party? <laughs> of course, man. But you know what I do have out right now that we did release is a three-song EP officially. We pressed 3,000 copies, and I'm giving them away free on my site. Yeah, I got one of those. That's actually what got me the idea for the uh, for the interview. Actually, I had seen it. Yeah, yeah, from, uh, well, Mickey Avalon, you know, announced it, and I'm on, I, I'm actually on your friends list on MySpace myself, so I thought, hey, I like this song, um, I've been writing for a Spanish magazine for a long time, in fact, thanks, man, uh, uh, is there anything you want to say to Spanish fans to kind of explain things in case they don't really get what you're about? Yeah, I mean, actually videotaping myself because I don't have a recorder so I was thinking of putting this up on YouTube. You want to say something in Spanish to the folks? Oh man, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, how about you tell me something to say and I'll say it. Alright, um, you could say like, uh, saludos a mis fans de España. Yeah. What is that? Uh, say, well actually you can say abrazos a mis fans. It's just, it's just cutting out a little bit. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, un abrazo muy fuerte. Una. Un abrazo. Un abrazo. Muy fuerte. Muy fuerte. I might not be able to anymore. <laughs> oh, no problem. That's cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what? I'll work on it. Um, maybe we can get it again, like, tomorrow. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> un abrazo muy fuerte. When I was a kid, my dad... My dad tried to teach me Spanish, and I learned a couple of things. I learned a lot of curse words. Believe me, when he was pissed off, I, I know I knew every curse word you could ever imagine. 
Right. Uh, about Eagle Ground Food, though. <laughs> They'll like that. No, but you know what? I, I mean, I grew up, uh, my dad was Spanish. My, my, you know, like, I really, my dad was always my main support system because my dad was working, my dad, well, it was hard in the streets, my main fucking support system. I grew up in Allentown, Pennsylvania. I was born in Harlem, New York, and I lived in Newark, New Jersey. So if you know those places, you know. Those are all pretty rough towns, yeah. You go to the place where you can, you know, my parents moved to the places they can afford, like, you know, like, just like, you know, projects. I was in the projects, and not to sound like I'm trying to make you, like, think that I'm a hard person, I'm not anymore, like, but I did, I, I definitely, like, I definitely came from a place. That's why Nikki and us all meet up in the middle, because we all come from the same broken families, you know, like, you know, I, I came from a family that was, like, my dad was very, like, Spanish, men are different than American men, because Spanish men are very family-oriented. Right. They will never, ever let anything bad happen to their family. If they have to move eight people into a place, they'll do it. Right. You know what I mean? But, so my dad was that way, so my mom split out and went with her stepdad, about a hundred of them. I fucking was torn between that and, my, and living in that chaotic world. And, and that's where a lot of my songs come from. I did a song called Freak. Uh -huh. Like 27 years old, oh, and actually it starts with, I don't know, it goes, it goes, um, it starts with, I get burned, but I never run. Special ed classes since I was born. People say I'm a loner. High school dropout. I'm a stoner. Don's counselor told me I'll be sleeping for at the age of 30. And can you really blame me? My own, my own babysitter used to try to lay on top of me. And when I was 13, a garbage bag full of porno. Not a really good thing to see when you're only your kid. Come on, please. And my mom, you know what I mean? It's like, it's kind of like, that's like, come, I, I pulled all that out of when I was living with my stepdad. Right, right. You know, my, my dad was the only person that was like, my dad finally said enough of this and took me, my brother, and my sister and moved us into this small apartment and, and was like, enough of that. Because he was Spanish, my dad, I mean, my dad was, you can, he would cook for us, he would clean, he would work, and then we'd come home and just be miserable because he had to work at the factory, you know, because he was not from America, and he had to, he, he I like I always say, I was, when I make a million dollars, I'm going to buy my dad a house, because, like, he's the one who, like, got me to where I'm at, you know? Right. Yeah, I read about how your, your stepfather slammed a, a bunny against a wall? Yeah, I mean, one of them, this guy, Richard Hughes. Uh-huh. Richard Hughes, like... I want to find him, so I can. I want to. I, I always said I want to find him, and then I want to put him in a ring and, and knock his ass out, <laughs> like in, a, in an actual fight in a ring, and record it on YouTube or something. Right. Because like now I'm grown up, and like he used to just, you know, he, like he, I don't know, I don't know what it is. It was kind of like I, I used to like this. One day he walked out naked with his hand cupping his dick, thinking that that's okay as long as he's cupping his dick, and I can't see it. And I was like seven years old, and he walked up to me and goes, "I'm your new daddy," and just walked away. And I was like, okay. And like that was kind of the experience. And you know, if I left a toy out and he tripped on it, he would, he, like, I remember having a toy when I was a kid and he just took it, like, Transformer toy, and just smashed it against the wall. And my bunny, I had a pet bunny, and it just went on the bathroom all over on the floor, and he grabbed it and threw it against the brick wall. And he said, come with me real quick. Like, I thought he was going to take the bunny and, like, do something nice. But he walked me outside, and there was a big side of the house with a white wall. I mean, it was white, and he threw the bunny against the wall. And the bunny's blood just, like, channeled down the wall, and the bunny just fell. And it was just crushed and, like, still alive and was just dead, you know? So it just mm -hmm. kind of, like, was like, I remember that moment. And, like, just, like, that's the moment where, I'm, like, my, my stepdad, my, my real dad was, like, just enough of this. Like, and then there's all kinds of shit, like, think, like, a lot of that, this all channels back to the music, believe me. Like, it's, like, just, like, I don't know, I'll be going through that shit. I'm sure a lot of Spanish kids do, too. Like, mm -hmm. it's just... You know, I just took all the fucking angry shit that I bottled up, you know, for the whole, until I was 20, I started doing dirt when I was 26. I took all that anger and baldness, all the stuff that it was built up in me, and finally I could write a song, and I, and I, and I learned how to write music somehow, I don't know, maybe it was natural, but it just came out of me, and it just all came, and dude, I broke that record so fast, man, I could have put that record out a time ago. Awesome. Hey, hey, did you, speaking of music, what were you, who were your influences, or who did you grow up listening to? My influences were, man, the first stuff I really started listening to was, I mean, I, I met a Mexican guy that lived above me once with my mom in some random apartment, and he obviously was a DJ or something in the 80s, and he gave me a crate full of records because he didn't fit in his car, and I was like seven years old, and, 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 and that crate was... Um, you know, Karis One, um, Curtis Blow, um, a lot of the old 80s mixtapes, um, mm -hmm. but they were on LPs. 
Yeah. Now, that, Ron DMC was my biggest. I had the ch I had the cram shows and the poster, and my dad would never take me to the concert. Um, NWA was in there. That was my introduction. To, I, I was introduced to 80s hip hop, and I loved it, and I was really into it. I later on got out of that phase. Of course, his kids changed their mind every minute, and I remember hearing the Misfits, and and uh, I fell. Actually, to back up a minute, I well, I had another I think that Richard he had a and we had an attic, and I went up there and I found a couple of LPs, and it was I found I don't know I can name them all for you. I found Aerosmith. Toys in the Attic. I found Zeppelin 3, Zeppelin 2. I found Dark Side of the Moon, Steve Miller. Um, that was my second introduction to music. Third was I used to listen to Temple out on the radio in Philadelphia. When outside of, it came out of Philly, that was near Allentown. And I, and I used to listen to Coltrane and all that stuff. So that's when I kind of knew, like my dad knew already that I was, that there was something different about me when it came to music. That I was listening on a different level, you know? Yeah, well, you you clearly had a lot of good influences. I mean, all those yeah. are awesome. And then I and then I heard the Misfits, and then that led to me hearing. Then I got into all the '80s um, punk rock. Minor Threat was a big influence. Um, Glenn Dance was one of my biggest. Um, the Misfits, Sam Hain, Black Flag is a big one. If you hear Twenty Four Hour Party, you'll hear the influence on that. Totally. Um, I like Rollins Band. I like, well, I like all the Rollins Band stuff. That's where I took a lot of my, like, not to give up the secrets, but the power. You know, when Rollins is on stage, he stands there and he represents power. And if, if you see, like, Beardo's almost the same way. I'm like, I come out with a ski mask on, a leather jacket, alone, and I just, you know, it's just like, uh, and aggressive. And I'm not just rapping or talking. I'm, like, screaming those lyrics. Right, right. And, and it's like, that's, that's where a lot of those influences came. And then a lot of other things like Pennywise. Um, those are the punk influences. I love Jimi Hendrix's experience. I love Led Zeppelin. I loved all the classic rock stuff too, all this, the typical stuff. Robin Trowell, because of course I got, I was always a guitarist. Um, all that, and I love jazz music. A lot of like, a lot of 70s stuff, like 70s miles, like all his like crazy experimental stuff. And um, all that stuff. So there's been a lot of my influences. A lot of punk rock, a lot of hip hop. I, like I love Gangstar, and I loved all the '90s rap too. That's when I got back into hip hop again. Like I, I rap punk rock for a while, back to hip hop in like '92. I started listening to all like Gangstar, Black Sheep, um, uh, Tupac, Dre, all the Dre stuff. You know, um, anything that was out. You know, just all that stuff. I mean, do you remember all that stuff? Like just like. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. Snoop. Like, um, it was a great time in hip hop, you know, in the nineties. Yeah. Pumpkin. Nirvana was my first concert. Yeah, Nirvana was awesome. Well, I'm glad that you uh obviously you've been around and you've been around music and good music and that's that's important. I studied music I studied music like like more than a lot of people would ever know. Like a lot of times Cisco they're like, Man, you're kinda of cheating yourself because you don't I don't feel that way, but like, because, I mean, if you want to talk music, I, I can, I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll go against anyone because I probably know more about, I probably know more about classical music and, 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 and ear training and harmony than most, than, than anyone, than most people, than anyone knows. Like, I studied John Cage and 20th century harmony and I studied all that stuff. Like, like I went to school for music too, for jazz, and I, and I played bebop and I played, Coltrane and I and I sat in with some of the best jazz bebop musicians in the world. Awesome. Like, it just didn't all come out. You know what I mean? Like I really, really fell in love and studied music and really, you know, and really, really studied it and like and, and I still do every day. Yeah, yeah, well that's and great. Levels. Yeah, yeah, that's that's important and that's uh no matter what you do, I think you need to know what's out there. You know, so you know the rules, so you know how to break them. You know what I mean? Exactly. And it's like, you know, Beardo is everything I ever wanted to do. I'm completely content with my record. I love my record that I made. And the only thing that holds me back right now, uh, in a little way, is, is, um, is everyone loves the way that the songs sound now. And you have to understand that I, I'm not a mixer and I'm not a master. I did all that by myself just because I, I just tried to make it sound like a Phil Spector record. Or I made, tried to make it sound like like seven inch moments, like Phil Spector era, like or I tried to make it sound. I, I didn't care what I had to do. I just used what I had and tried to mimic the records that I loved sonically. Awesome, awesome. So the battle I have now is I have a guy mixing the whole record right now, a 
professional guy, and let's see what he can do, and then I'm going to put both albums next to each other and let everyone hear them and go, what do you think? And then that's that's where I'm at right now, you know, with my record. And, but I am content, and I feel like a, I, I feel like the record is very strong, and I feel like it, like, I feel like it just, it's hokey. It's got, like, it's got the party songs, and it's got the depressing songs. It's got, you know, it just talks, it's really just a record of my life, man. To be honest, it's a record of the good times and the bad times. Cool, cool. Well, very cool. I think I have enough, more than enough for, for, for an interview, man. But I, I appreciate yeah. everything you did. I'm gonna, I'm gonna translate all this to Spanish. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and post. I gotta see it in Spanish. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I translated your, your bio too, so that everybody kind of know. I just pulled it off your MySpace page. So. Yeah. Yeah. And um, is that going to be for a, it's going to be for a mag magazine, right? Right. It's an online magazine called Indie Rock. It's connected to the biggest newspaper in southern Spain in Granada called Oh my god, amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um and they're really good friends of mine. I actually I was born in Spain and I was there last summer and I was able to actually meet them face to face. They love music and they love new stuff like this, so I think they're going to love you. Yeah, it's great. Like, um, yeah, man, like, like I said, man, I mean, I'm, I'm just really, I'm happy. I'm happy that everyone's getting down with Beardo and, and, but just know that, you know, that everything that I, that I, that I did in this, in this situation is, was completely from the heart and it's just real and it's, you know, and it's just, I'm just, you know, I just hope everyone loves it and takes, takes something that will make them happy and, you know, maybe not kill themselves. You know what I mean? I feel like that's what music's about. Like, like you take things. Like, I remember hearing Elliot Smith, and I didn't want to kill myself after I heard it. Right. It's kind of like music does that to you. Like, how many times have you heard a song, and you're like, things aren't so bad. Like, this guy, it's like I'm speaking, I don't know, I guess I made a record for all all the lost souls. Yeah, that's so, great. I tried to, you know? Yeah. So, it, trying to, like, if you feel bad and you put a beautiful record on, I guarantee at the end of it, you won't feel... You won't feel as bad anymore because you'll know that uh, that that I feel that same way, and and you're not alone. So that's what you want to take from. I think that's what I would want. I think that's what I hope people take from my music. That's great, man. Well, I I appreciate everything you're doing, and I look forward to hearing the full CD when it comes out in January. Or yeah, man. You know what? Uh, yes. If you hit me, up, hit me, up, hit me up some Kevin, and I'll get it to you. Just if you keep it secret. I'll turn you on to it. Absolutely. All right, brother. Cool. Well, thank you so much, brother. Um, I, I'll definitely be in touch. Great, man. Let me know when it's done. I'll have to check it out. Definitely. Definitely. All right, brother. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Later. Later. Ese fue mi amigo Beardo, hablando de su nuevo CD y de sus experiencias en la música. Eh, voy a traducir todo eso en español a, a español, así que va a salir en indie rock dentro de poco. Ya os avisaré. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you so much a Birdo y hasta pronto. <música>